Hi everyone and welcome to The Pen Habit. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a review of the Schaefer 300. Now, the Schaefer 300 is a modern Schaefer pen of which I have had basically no experience. Um, so this, will, this was my very first Schaefer pen. First of all, a huge thanks to Drew who lent the pen to me so I could take a look at it. And uh, gonna go through it. I haven't had a ton of time with the pen, but uh, when it comes to other people's pens, I like to do the reviews as quickly as I can and get them back to folks. So uh, I'm gonna go through this and, and talk you through what I have experienced so far with the pen. And, uh, and so I can get this back and on its way to Drew. Comes in a Schaefer clamshell box, open it up and inside is the pen itself. The whole bed comes out and underneath you've got a couple of Schaefer cartridges and it's use and care guide with warranty booklets. So nothing too unstandard there. Get that out of the way. And this is the pen. So Schaefer 300s are uh, metal pens, metal bodied pens. The This is the, I believe it's the iridescent blue. You can see the iridescence right there on the video. Uh, very rich blue kind of lacquered finish. Metal cap, shiny chromed cap. The, the It's hinged, it's got a hinged uh, clip, which is actually a little too loose for my taste. I like my clips to be just a bit more, uh, more solid there. Got the Schaefer white dot, kind of standard there come down and it says Schaefer along the cap, tapers slightly to the end here, and there's a little metal finial on the end with a ridge on it, and we'll come back to that in just a second. Pop top cap, so you pull it off, and uh, it is a cartridge converter pen, it uses Schaefer cartridges and converters, so it won't use, uh, I don't believe, standard international work with Schaefer's. Um, Plastic section tapers down to kind of a short, stubby little nib. Uh, this pen is in medium. And uh, yeah, it's not a terribly expensive pen. Um, it feels pretty solid, though. Um, it does It does feel solid. You know, the metal, metal bodied pens often do nice. You can probably hear it here, the nice click when you close the cap. A uh, couple of things about the pen, the, the design of the pen that I don't love. While I like the look of this shiny chrome cap, it uh, picks up fingerprints like nobody's business. And uh, and that would drive me crazy. I'm, I'm just OCD enough that that would drive me absolutely bonkers. Uh, the, the section or the, the body feels solid. I, you know, I'm sure it could pick up micro scratches, but that's true of any pen. So that's not a big deal. And then, as I mentioned, the really loose spring loaded, uh, hinged clip, I, I don't like very much. It doesn't feel solid to me. The other thing about it that I'm just not super in love with is this itty bitty little nib. Um, it just feels out of proportion to the pen but it writes pretty well. So I'm not going to complain too much. You know, I'd rather have an out of proportion nib that's a little funny looking, but writes well to a nib that doesn't. So let's go through the specs on the pen. Uh, it is 141 millimeters capped. It's only 120 when posted, so it can be a little short for some folks. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> The pen can be posted. There's that in that little ridge I was telling you about, it actually clicks onto the end of the pen. So it's not coming off, which is cool. Unfortunately, it is 155 millimeters in length when it's posted, which is not too terribly long, but the cap is significantly heavier than the whole pen. So it is very, very back heavy. I mean, you can see here, I'm balancing it on the cap itself, and it's still only balanced. It's it's very uncomfortable to to write with posted. I, I that's probably the thing I like least about it. If you're going to make your pen of this really heavy solid metal, you got or the cap of the really heavy solid metal, you got to do the same thing with the pen, or make it long enough that it doesn't need to be posted to write with it. Um, I can't post this pen. It's it's basically impossible. Uh, in terms of Widths, we are looking at 10 and a half millimeters in the center of the section, 
and 13.1 millimeters at both the widest point of the cap and the barrel because there's it's a smooth transition between the two when it's capped. And in terms of weight, it's 18 grams uncapped or unposted and 42 when it's capped or posted. So we're looking there at, uh, let's see, 24 grams. The cap is 24 grams by itself and the pen is only 18, which I'm sorry, a cap should never weigh more than the whole pen. Uh, all right. Well, let's. Um, that's the specs on the pen. You know, I really do like this iridescent blue material. This is not a material I've seen um, from most of the retailers who carry this pen. Uh, it's something Drew told me that he got it on eBay and got it for a pretty good price on eBay for $35, I believe. Uh, so it's a, it's a decent entry-level pen. Uh, I like it more than I like the Lamy Safari. Uh, certainly. Um, and, and that's about, that runs about the same price. I feel this is a lot more comfortable in the hand and I like the nib much, much better. So, uh, the nib itself is kind of, uh, you know, I mentioned very small, just stainless steel says Schaefer and M on it. So nothing special there. Um, so let's go ahead and do some writing. This is the Schaefer 300 with a steel nib in medium. The ink for today is Iroshizuku. Ama Iro, which I believe is their sky blue. It's nice ink. And the quote. Mark Twain is one of my all-time favorite writers. And I think that has a great deal to do with the fact that I narrated um, his entire Tom and Huck audio, or his the audiobooks of the entire Tom and Huck quadrology, quadrilogy, whatever it is, uh, all four of the books that he wrote with uh, Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn. So uh, I, I enjoy his writing quite a bit. Plus, I, I love doing his books because you get to do so many fun character voices. Uh, okay. So in terms of writing, uh, it is a little on the dry side for my taste. I, I prefer a bit more wetness on in my pens, but it's not, you know, it, 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 it runs a little dry, but it's consistently dry. Um, it's fairly smooth, but a little bit feedbacky, which, uh, you know, there was a great thread recently on the FP Geeks forum on what the definition is between scratchy, feedback, and toothy. And everyone has their own definition. So for clarity, here's mine. Uh, scratchy means that it, you can actually feel the nib digging into the paper, uh, usually caused by the tines being out of alignment or one of the edges of the tines being very sharp. Uh, feedback, I use feedback and tooth basically the same way. Um, to me, that's the feeling of the, the pen gliding over the paper. If you can feel the friction between the pen and the paper, uh, then that that's giving you feedback. It can be unpleasant, or a lot of people just like knowing that their pen is writing. They like that feel of the friction and, and the, the very fast slip and stick. Uh, I don't, if any of you uh, watched Mr. Wizard growing up, I, I'm of that age where I watched, you know, the reruns of Mr. Wizard growing up. And he did this thing with the, uh, the wine glasses where, it, you know, it would slip and then stick and slip and then stick in that vibration. Some people really like that vibration in the nib of their pen. I'm not one of them. I like my pens to be super smooth. Um, now that can be basically achieved by one of a couple different ways. It, if you've got a solid amount of ink coming out, it actually kind of forms a cushion 
and you're almost hydroplaning across the paper, which will help with that smooth feeling. So if your nib's running dry, it will kind of by nature start to feel a little more feedbacky. Um, the other thing is if the surface of the nib hasn't been polished smoothly, then that can also result in some feedbacky qualities. Um, but I, I like smooth nibs, always have since I started using fountain pens. This is just a touch feedbacky for my tastes, but that's fine. You know, it's not scratchy by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but I, and I think most of this feedback quality comes from the fact that the nib is too dry. Uh, it's just, it's too dry for me. It needs, it needs to be a little bit more wet. Need to bring it up to that whole moderate wetness thing. Um, in terms of the upside down writing, it'll write upside down kind of. It's, it's pretty scratchy here. Oh, 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 I hate that feeling. Um, it's a little out of alignment on the top, which is fine because they don't normally polish the tops of nibs. Um, there's not really much give in the nib at all. Not, not any to mention. Um, you can see you get a little extra wetness if you push on the tines a bit, but it's not, it's not a, even a springy nib. It's, it's pretty rigid. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a fine pen. There's nothing wrong with it. I will say that the the design doesn't really doesn't really sing to me. I do like this iridescent blue material here, um, but the really heavy cap it just feels off to me. Um, and, and the fact that if you want to post it, you have to post this super heavy cap on the back. You know, it, it's a nice pen. If it was a little wetter and a little smoother, it would be an even nicer pen, I think. Um, but it's just not my thing, and that's okay. You know, the interesting thing about fountain pens, and one of the things that I've really come to, to respect and appreciate about fountain pens is that there's such a diversity of opinions among people who use them that it's okay for people to have different opinions. Some people really love the pens. Some people are just, you know, they're good pens, but nothing special, and, and then there's a few pens that people hate, and th they rarely line up, and that's okay because everyone has their own uh, opinions and preferences. Uh, this one for me, it's it's okay. Nothing special. Um, you know, if, if I were to compare this to my pens that are several, some of my favorite pens, many of which are, you know, in the, the $300 to $700 range, this doesn't even compare. It, it just doesn't even compare. If I were to compare it to other pens in the 10 to 35 range, it's fairly comparable. Um, personally, I like my Jin Hao's a little better, my Jin Hao X450s, because I was able to swap them out with Goulet nibs, which I feel are slightly better nibs. Um, and they use International Standard, which is my preferred cartridge and converter format. Um, but I like, you know, I like this well enough. It's not not my favorite, but again, it's uh, it's not bad. So if you're looking for a starter pen, this might be one to look at, um, especially if you like a heavier, slightly heavier pen, if you like metal pens, um, if you need a drier pen for, let's say you're taking notes at school and using really awful composition notebooks for tests or things like that, a dry pen is actually something you probably want, as opposed to uh, me who uses, I'm fortunate enough that I can afford to take my Clairefontaine notebooks with me to work and I use Tomoe River paper for my journal. So um, a super dry pen doesn't really do anything for me. So that has been my review of the Schaefer 300. Uh, as always, please make sure to head over to penhabit.com to check out the photos and the write-up I do on the pen. Uh, you can also find me on all of the social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, etc. Links are in the show or in the description down below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye.